Now we're cooking. <laughs> I was just saying, welcome everyone to this Trade Station Masterclass. It is all about easy language today, although this class is designed for those of you that are just getting started with the programming language. Uh, there is a lot to learn in easy language, and um, it is called the easy language because, I mean, it, it uses English-like statements in order for you to program your own custom analysis techniques. So that's the reason why it's called the easy language. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of uh, different uh, intricacies. There's a lot of different types of words that are used in the language. Uh, there's a lot of syntax rules that you need to follow. So as in any other language learning uh, curve, uh, this is the same. You have to learn the language and you have to learn how to utilize it if you want to customize your own studies and strategies. So today is all about how to get started, where do we go, how do we create simple things um, so that you know how easy it is to, you know, just put something on the chart. That's what, that's what we're talking about. Of course, you know, the programming can be taken to any level of difficulty. You can create analysis techniques that are very involved. You know, we've talked many times about chart trading in this class. Chart trading is a tool that is created in an easy language and it has, you know, 25,000 lines of easy language code. You know, that's impressive. But it's something that shows you the capabilities of easy language and how far you can take the language. But today is not about making it difficult. Today is all about making it as simple as we can. So the class is leveraging easy language and it's titled the Introduction to Easy Language. But before we jump into the content, let's go ahead and talk about some of the disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of trade station. Also that active trading is not suitable for everyone. Uh, it has risks and you have to be aware of those risks. And when we look at past historical performance, this is no guarantee of future results. Uh, for additional information on these disclosures, go to our website, www.tradestation.com, and you'll find all the information there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. By the way, I do see a few people here, not, um, not the number that I was expecting. I'm not sure if today is one of those off days, or um, did anybody have any difficulties logging on to class? I know that I started off, I started the presentation or the stream a little bit later than usual. And I usually try to start it, you know, three or four minutes before the start time. So once you go to the website, everything has started. But um, today, kind of I was running late. So I started, I started the presentation late. So hopefully someone or a few people are just sitting there waiting to reload the page for the presentation to be seen. All right. So I, I don't see any comments here in the chat. So I, I suppose that um, everything worked as usual. So thank you everyone for being here. If you're going to be submitting comments or any uh, questions into the chat, I do ask that everyone sets the chat window to everyone. There's a little drop down right there at the bottom. So feel free to submit any questions if you have any during the presentation. The first thing we're going to do is define the easy language. So what is easy language? Easy language is a combination of words, operators, and punctuation that is used to create rules or instructions based on market data, which trade station follows to perform more analytical tasks. Now that is a mouthful. Uh, what it just means is that, yeah, as we said at the very beginning of the presentation, the language has its own words. It has its own way of, uh, you know, of structuring a sentence. Uh, you have to use the right punctuation and you have to set it in a particular way for trade station to understand. Once you set up the code the way that it should be, then TradeStation mixes the code with market data, which is totally maintained by TradeStation. And um, those calculations, the calculations you create with easy language, once they're mixed with market data, TradeStation is going to perform um, any or some analytical tasks. Now these tasks, as, as it says there, the definition can be um, of analytical nature, or they can be also um, order entry tasks where it actually generates an order for you. So what are the benefits of learning easy language? You may be asking, I mean, if everything is built into the trade station platform, why do I have to spend 
my time and why do I have to make an effort to learn easing language? The first benefit is that you can translate your trading ideas into uh, something that a trade decision can understand. So you can create your own custom analysis techniques and your own custom strategies. Now that is the biggest benefit because how, how cool it is for you to find something in trade station that you like, like, um, like a, a technical idea, Bollinger Band, MACD, whatever it is. And for you to be able to modify that technical idea to personalize it, to make it your own. So that's the biggest benefit, I think. All right. Um, yeah, I agree, Jim. True. Yes, I need to send out those messages before uh, the day of the class so that everyone is aware of the time and the topics and everything that is part of, uh, of the class. Totally, totally agree with you. Uh, the slide PDF. Yes, you can. In fact, now that you mentioned that, I forgot to upload the PDF to our media server, but um, that'll take me just uh, a couple minutes. So if you guys hang on here with me. I'll upload the PDF to our media server and I'll have a very nice download. You know, when you want the page to load fast, it never does. Uh, all right, let me go here and then go here, open up my masterclass documents, upload this one right here, which I edited this morning. Pretty much the same one that we used last time. I always refresh the content, maybe add a few lines of text here and there, modify a few things, but it's pretty much the same one that I used the last time when I did the introduction. So let me just move this page over here to the right-hand side and copy this right here and send it to everyone in the chat. All right, so that's uh, my PDF link. So hopefully it works for everyone. If it doesn't, let me know right here in the chat. So biggest benefit, of learning easy language. I know Jim has done a lot of work in easy language, so uh, he can probably stand here and do the class <laughs> for us. Uh, but yes, the biggest benefit is for you to create your own custom analysis techniques and strategies. Uh, you also have an added benefit, which is you can edit and modify what's built into TradeStation. I think we added, we talked about this as the biggest benefit, but um, the biggest benefit is creating your own personal analysis techniques and strategies. The second, biggest benefit is to is to edit what comes built into trade station so you open up Bollinger Band you want to make certain modifications how cool it is for you to go in there make the modifications and make it work for you uh, you can also read and understand and learn from what others have written you know when I when I said at the very beginning of the presentation that chart trading is something that is written in easy language you know how cool it is that you can open it up and see all the 25,000 lines of code that make up you know chart trading and somehow use it for your benefit maybe maybe it's a little bit too advanced but you can take something simple open it up see how it's written maybe take some ideas here and there copy them paste them into your own you know easy language document and make it your own that's exactly what i'm talking about and you can also understand how analysis techniques and strategies are calculated this is an added benefit you know sometimes we take it for granted the way that TradeStation calculates, but having an understanding of the easy language just give you an edge, especially when it, when it comes to strategy trading and uh, the way that alerts are generated. Uh, we understand uh, fully the mechanism behind the TradeStation platform to generate these alerts, to place these trades. It just gives you that little more understanding of those technicalities. So let's go ahead and talk about the data that is used in easy language, because as I said at the very beginning, the data is maintained by TradeStation. So what data do you have available uh, that you can access and create your calculations on? Well, we have the open, high, low, and close. It doesn't matter which uh, bar type you use, the open, high, low, close bar, which is the one on the left, or a candlestick. You know, all those styles of charting have access to all these data points, even if you even if you have a line on close chart, which is just a very it's just a line connecting the closing prices, you still have access to all these data points. Open, high, low, close, you know, what the bar opened at, the highest price it reached, 
the lowest price it reached and the closing price for that bar. It also gives you a date stamp on that bar and a timestamp on that bar that can also be referenced in easy language. You also have volume data, so you know the number of ticks that happen in the bar, and you also know the number of shares that were traded inside of that bar. Of course, you also get options related data for the symbols that um, for the symbols that this pertains to. I mean, it's not available for all symbols, but uh, if you're looking at implied volatility or option volume or option open interest, depending on the symbol that you're using, you may have this options data available. The same goes for fundamental data. Not every symbol has fundamental data. If you bring up a futures contract, of course, that's not going to have EPS. But um, if you pull up a stock, then fundamental data applies. What we're saying is that depending on the symbol you have on the chart, some of these data points will be available. And of course, open interest, the same thing applies. It all depends on the symbol that you're using. But all this data is managed and maintained by TradeStation, which is a huge benefit because you don't have to be concerned about creating your own databases. You don't have to be maintaining the data. Everything is done by TradeStation. All you need to do as an easy language programmer is tap into the data and use it in your calculations. Analysis techniques and strategies, once you create them and you put them on the chart, they all start calculating on that first bar or the first bar that gets loaded on the chart. So this all depends on the amount of historical data you put on a chart. If you put in you know, two years of one minute data, yeah, the study will use all that data in its calculations. You don't have to, spec you don't have to specify that inside the code. Whatever is loaded onto the chart, that's exactly what the study will use, starting on the very first bar and going forward, bar by bar, calculating your formulas, your rules, one at a time. Once it goes to the very front of the chart or the bar that is currently building in real time, then your study and your, or your strategy will update tick by tick as it is designed. But um, it's so cool that TradeStation has this huge database that you can tap into and use the data in any way that you desire. So let's go ahead and start managing our tools and how we can create our first indicator. In this class, we're gonna create a simple indicator, then we're gonna create a simple show me, and then we're gonna create a simple strategy. And I think we have some time to create an indicator on radar screen so you can see all the different uh, variations. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this indicator is going to do. This indicator plots a line representing the real body of each candle. Real body, for those that are candlestick followers, uh, you know that it's the relationship between the open and the, uh, the open and the close. Not so much, you know, the high and the low, which is the range of the candle, pretty much the thick part of the candle. This is what the real body is, um, is talking about. The value oscillates between positive and negative because sometimes you have an up candle and sometimes you have a down candle. So ideally, if you have a down candle, you want a negative number, or if you want a positive, or if you have a positive number, you want a, or if you have an up candle, you want a positive number. So in a candle like this one that is pictured here in this slide, we can see that it opened up at 16 and it closed at 12. How do we know that? Because the candle is red and any candle that is red is considered a down candle. So we know that it opened at 16 and it closed at 12. So in, in terms of calculating this real body uh, measurement, which is the difference between the open and the close, we want the real body not to be expressed as a positive four, but we want it to be as a negative four. So the order of operations here is really important. You may think if you do open minus the close is the same thing as close minus the open, but it's not. In a candle like this, open minus the close will give you a positive four, but close minus the open will give you a negative four. So thinking about or thinking in line with with what we want the indicator to do to give us a negative value. If you're on a down candle, then the order of operations is important and we want close minus the open. So let's go ahead and put that into an indicator. 
we're going to keep it simple. You know how easy it is to put that mathematical formula onto a chart. Let me switch over here to my trade station platform. I have a whole bunch of things here open. And uh, from here, yeah, let's uh, pull up a chart first. We'll need a chart eventually once we create our first study and we put it on the chart. And uh, let me go here to style. I want to, I want to pull up an open, I'm sorry, not an open high, low close bar. I want a candlestick chart. So candle right here. All right, and let's go ahead and put in something that is highly traded. This is uh, Microsoft and I'm gonna pull up a daily chart of Microsoft. All right, so we have candles for Microsoft right here on the screen. So we, we said that the real body is the thick part of the candle relationship between the open and the close. And we're gonna be measuring those real bodies. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the development environment. That's the first step in your programming class. Easy language is just an application right here in apps. We open it up and this launch is what's called the, the easy language development environment. Do not be scared with the name. <laughs> it is programming. We are going to do programming here, but you're gonna see how simple we're going to keep it. I'm going to, first of all, on the file menu and you click on new, you have this um, drop down of different types of easy language documents you're going to create because that's the first decision you have to make. What is it that I'm trying to create? Is it an indicator? Is it a show me? Is it a paint bar or is it a strategy? And then you have to select the corresponding easy language type. If you mess this up, then you're going to probably have to um, no you you're going to probably have to rewind everything you did in order to start all over. So you 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 have to be careful as to the type of um, easy language document you're starting off with, because it'll change things going forward. Uh, for this in, for this um, example that we're going to work on at this moment, we're going to do an indicator. All right. So my indicator, I'm going to call it you know. Usually we, uh, when we name our indicators, we give it a special character at the very beginning so that um, it's sorted at the very top. I'm gonna use a double exclamation. I use exclamation for other things, but I'm gonna do a double exclamation because I think it'll force it to the very top. I'm gonna call this a real body. All right. Uh, and everything else, I'm just gonna leave it because I wanna keep uh, the presentation simple. This is just an introduction class. One of the things that I did is when it says select template, which is not set to none by default, I go in there and set it to none. None just means give me a blank document. Do not start with any additional information. I don't need it. I'm just gonna go straight into the code and that's why I selected none. I'm gonna click okay. The name real body is already being used by another study. Choose another name. Let me see if I can add another exclamation here. So three exclamation marks. There we go. So three exclamation marks. I have to go back to my list of studies and clean it up. I think I'm adding too, way too, too many indicators that mean nothing. And it just makes the list of studies long, longer and longer. And sometimes you just have to go back in there and clean it up. So going back to what we talked about real body and you know negative values and positive values, we know that the formula we want to use is close minus the open. And I'm just going to type that in here because um, usually when I write easy language, that's the way that I start. I just put jot down, you know, the formula and then I, I, I clean it up a little bit. I may add some inputs. I may add some variables. We're going to talk about those in a very simple way right here in this class. So that's my formula, close minus the open. I want you guys to uh, notice that some of the words here come up in blue. Whenever something comes up in blue in easy language, that is a reserved word. It has a specific meaning. So if you use the word close inside of the easy language, it just references the closing price of the bar. But I'm gonna store this mathematical formula. I'm gonna store it in what we call a variable, all right? Um, you know, we can use variables or choose not to. I mean, it's optional. Variables in a programming language just makes your code a little bit more efficient. And it's easier for you to keep track of mathematical formulas without having to type them up over and over again. But for this presentation, you know, 
Mm, let's, let's avoid using variables and we'll just keep it simple. I am going to use a, um, a, a statement that is used in easy language a lot, which is a plot statement. A plot statement is what tells uh, easy language to draw something on the chart, whether it is a line, uh, you know, a, um, uh, a show me, you have to use the word plot. So I'm gonna use plot and I'm going to number it with a one. Notice how the word comes up in blue. Um, we number them because you can have an indicator that has multiple plots. A clear example is uh, the Bollinger Bands. It has three lines. So it uses three different plots, plot one, plot two, and plot three. The indicator that we're creating today is just a simple um, mathematical formula, close minus the open. So I'm just gonna use plot one to plot that result. That's exactly what the plot statement does. Uh, but we do need something else here. We need to put whatever value we are trying to plot, we need to put it inside parentheses. So let me go ahead and do that right here. And this is it, you know? I don't think I need anything else here to plot what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna add a semicolon at the very end so that um, you know that is the end of the statement. And now that I talk about the semicolon, let's go back to the PowerPoint because there's a, there's a few elements that I want to talk to you about. First of all, easy language is not case sensitive. So it doesn't matter if you capitalize words, if you write in all caps, or if you use all lowercase, it doesn't matter. Easy language doesn't read case. When I looked at my code, you know, sometimes I capitalize words just out of habit. And also for readability purposes, when I look at the words, I just like to see them capitalized. Some of them will not be capitalized. Some of them I'll capitalize the whole word, all the letters in the word, but it's up to you how to, how to write it. Whatever feels good to you, use that way, but it's not case sensitive. You also can add line returns, line spacing, paragraph indents. They're also ignored when easy language runs. These are all used for readability. They do not affect the instructions. You're gonna see that sometimes I add a little bit more space, uh, sometimes I don't. So it all depends on how it is easy for you to read that code. Easy language requires the proper use of punctuation. And the very punctuation mark that I teach in my class is the semicolon, because the semicolon tells easy language, hey, I've reached the end of this idea. I'm going to go on to something else. And that way, easy language knows, well, I can't mix statements together. Semicolon tells you that, or tells you easy language that that's the end of that particular statement. So let me go back to my code. And that's why at the very end of this statement, which is telling easy language to plot the value of close minus the open, I have to end the statement with a semicolon. Now that we're done with our easy language code, our extensive program here, let's go ahead and verify it. Verification is the process by which easy language tells you if it finds some, something odd with your code. Not an, let me not call it odd. When it finds an error <laughs> in your code, because your code may have many odd things that make sense in your head and, uh, and we just you know, think it's odd. But it's not an odd thing, it's an error. So it has to make sense to ease the language. Otherwise, it'll just tell you, hey, this doesn't make sense. There's errors, I cannot verify. So the verification process is started by clicking on this green check mark right here at the top. So I'm gonna click it and you can see that, well, by default, there's a, there's a, like a pop-up window that shows up and it just says that you just verified something if it's being used somewhere else it'll automatically recalculate. I've, I've asked you know, my development environment to avoid showing me that message. There's a little check mark there that allows you to do that. But I can see right here at the bottom that my code has zero errors and zero warnings. And also I can see the two indications right here at the bottom as well that says that my code is saved and it's verified. So it did make sense to easy language. So let me go back here to my trade station and I'm all set. All I need to do is add that study and see what it looks like. Let me go here to studies, add study. Let me scroll, well, first of all, let me select indicator because that's the type of analysis technique that I created. Let me scroll to the very top. 
there I see three exclamation marks real body and I click okay. I don't have any inputs to modify. Let's go ahead and click okay. And here we go. That's how my code looks. And that's how the plots, that's how the plot gets started. I'm not sure if it looks okay on the screen because I didn't change the style or anything on this indicator. And I don't want to overcomplicate things, but I can always double click on that line. Go to the style, make it thicker. And that's it. That way, you know, it'll look nicer on the screen. You can make it as a default. So you can see it um, running on the screen. Another thing that I would do here on this indicator is probably I would uh, draw a zero line. You see, sometimes the indicator or the line goes positive and negative based on the mathematical formula we provided, but I, I need a reference line so that I can know when the value is negative and positive. It just enhances the visual. In order for you to add a horizontal line to any study, all you need to know is the value at which this line is going to be plotted on. Well, if you want a zero line, we know that zero is the value that it's going to be anchored to. So I'm gonna go back here to the code and all I need to do is add another plot. I already have the line that plots the real body. I need plot number two and inside parentheses, I'm just gonna type in the number zero. That's my horizontal line right there. Every bar, it'll plot at zero and it look, it'll look like a horizontal line. So let me verify one more time. Yes, every time you make a, an, a change to the code, you have to verify it. And when I come back here to trade station, there we go. Now it has a line, it's kind of a dark blue, which is okay because it will just blend with the background a little bit nicer. And you can see when the value is negative and when the value is positive. Did I do this right? Close minus the open. Because what I'm looking at here is every time there's a, yeah, it is fine. Every time you have a green candle, real body is positive. And every time you have a red candle, real body is negative. Now, let's go back here to my PowerPoint slide because we're gonna go to the next exercise, which is using easy language functions. Functions in easy language, they bring in additional mathematical formulas that are pre-built and pre-calculated uh, for you. You don't have to pretty much uh, bring in those um, mathematical formulas into the code. You can just reference the function and the function will perform that mathematical or analytical task. For our example, we're gonna modify the real body indicator to plot a line representing the average of the real body over a user specified number of bars. So yes, if we look at our chart, and we look at the real body line that we have at the bottom, it's very static. It looks like an EKG because it's just giving you the raw calculation of real body bar per bar. What if we were to smooth that line with an average? You know, so that if, uh, if, if, um, if the positive bars or the up bars are more than the red bars, I would think that the line of this indicator will maintain itself above zero. So if there's a bias to the upside, then my line should be more on the positive side. So that may be, you know, giving us a little bit more analytical value to the study. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go here to the easy language code. And I have to introduce average. Let me show you where the functions are. Right here on the right hand side, you see a little box that says dictionary. I use that all the time. And if you want to dock the dictionary to the right side, so it's always there. Uh, there's a little pushpin here in dictionary. I'm gonna do that here in this class, so I don't have to keep on rolling this bar over. And um, I'm going to open up the category here that's uh, called the easy language. You have other items that are part of the dictionary that are more object-oriented related. So I'm gonna avoid those for this class. As I said, this is a very simple explanation of easy language. So let me go ahead and click on the plus right here on this easy language uh, category. And hopefully it'll respond to my mouse click. It's not responding, there we go. So it opens up easy language. And if I scroll to the very bottom, I'm gonna see a subcategory labeled user functions. When I click there, 
I see all the different functions that are part of the trade station platform, including the one that I want, average. So what I do is I select average and I look at the way that the average function is utilized. You know, it gives you an example right here in this um, description box. It gives you an example on how the average function is used. Uh, it also has a link to help if you want additional information. But um, I know that from this description that it needs two parameters. It needs the price or the value that is being averaged and the length, how many periods you want that average for. And if you look at the example, it does that exactly. It just states the word average and inside parentheses, you have the value that's being averaged and for how many bars. So what I'm gonna do here on this line of code, I can either create a new one or I can just modify it, you know? I can add a plot number three, plot three, and I can say average. Notice that the function comes up in magenta. That's the way that functions come up in the, in the syntax. If it recognizes it, if you do, if you make a typo, if you do, if you have a typo, then they won't know what it is. So the way that you confirm that you've typed things correctly is making sure that the color comes on. So the average of the close minus the open, that's the expression that I want to average for a period, let's do a period of uh, 20 bars. I wanna hard code it. And then end that statement with a semicolon. Now the order in which I have the statements here for the plot statements, maybe um, I would do it differently, but I, I just wanna, I wanna show you how simple it is for you to add simple lines of code. I'm just gonna verify this. Uh, and of course, I'm getting an error. You look over here at the bottom, it says, oh, comma or parentheses expected here. So the error is generated on line four and the code kind of uh, highlights the area where the error, was, the error was generated, where the verification process got stuck. And the problem here, as you can see on plot three, is that I have the opening parentheses for the, for the plot statement. I have the opening parentheses for the function, but I only have one closing parentheses, so I don't have matching parentheses, so I'm missing an extra parentheses. Let's verify that again. And there we go. Now we have zero warnings or zero errors. Let me go to a trade station, and this is what it looks like. Now that yellow line, let me make it thicker. Let me go into the settings of this indicator. Go to, I'm gonna make that plot thicker. Oh, it was plot number three. All right, so if you look at it, now we're averaging those uh, values. We don't see those spikes anymore. If you're wanting to look at the average, maybe, maybe the, 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 the raw calculation is not even needed, uh, maybe in other types of analysis, but let me go ahead and remove that. I can remove that very quickly by just uh, adding a double forward slash at the very front of the line. That'll comment the whole line out. Notice that it turns green because green is just uh, notes that easy language just ignores. So by doing that and clicking on verify one more time, now I just have the zero line and I have this yellow line that it's the average of the real body. And take a look at what's going on here. When the market is uptrending, which you know the, the up candles are a little bigger than the down candles. You can see how there's, there's a, a, an, um, an inclination for that line to maintain its positivity. <laughs> it's on the positive side of this oscillating um, indicator. But when the market has, or is correcting or has more down candles than it has up candles, then you see how the line usually gets closer to the zero line or goes even down to the negative side because it's, uh, it's trending down. So very nice idea. We, um, we probably can create a, an alert on this study. Let me show you how to do that. I think, I think that's part of the next exercise here in our PowerPoint, which is, let's see, creating alerts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna modify our indicator 
so that it generates an alert every time the average crosses the zero line. Mm, interesting. So we look at the, the line here. Yeah, it oscillates between positive and negative, but we want to be alerted when it crosses zero. How do we do that? Very easily, I can just come here to the code and type in my conditions, if. Now, this is where a variable would be great because I can just reference the variable, but now I have to type in this whole thing right here, which is the function. If the average of the close minus the open for the last 20 bars crosses over zero, then alert. And I'll do the other one. If average crosses under zero, then alert. The nice thing about easy language alerts is that all you need is, uh, all you need is to type in the word alert and easy language will know what to do. So you put the alert word inside of a conditional statement. If this happens, then generate the alert. And what I'm looking for is the cross over or cross under to generate that alert. Very simple to do. Um, if we had used a variable, like for example, I'm just gonna use the word variable here and show you exactly what I mean by that. And um, I call my variable real body. Now I just have to assign the formula to real body. So real body, well, in this particular case, real body AVG, because it's an average, I just want to be as descriptive as possible, is this right here. That's what real body average is. So now instead of using the whole formula, I can just use the, the word. And right here, I can just use the word. Instead of retyping the whole formula by putting the formula inside of a variable, I can just reference that variable throughout my code. Let me verify this, and that's it. On the chart, I already have my alert criteria. All I need to do is um, modify the code or format it, go to the alert settings, and enable the alert. Because you do have to go there and enable it in order for the alert to be triggered. I'm going to do alert once per bar. And uh, I'm going to use the default. I'm not sure. If, I think I changed those, but I'm gonna, just going to use the ones that I have there. I'm going to click OK. So one thing about alerting here on indicators is that they only trigger in real time. So if it's happening right now, you don't see any of the historical alerts. So do we have any studies that are triggering the alert right now? Apple, Home Depot, AT&T. No, Verizon, WTR, amen. No, oh, there we go, there we go. We just got the alert. Take a look at the pop-up window right here at the bottom. Chart analysis alert, amen, at 154.71 because it crossed from negative to positive. So we did find a symbol that triggered the alert in real time. And uh, just shows you that it has to be in real time for you to get the alert. If you're looking for historical alerts, then we have to think about creating a show me. So a show me is a type of analysis technique in TradeStation that marks the bar anytime a condition is met. And this is very useful when you're monitoring historical alerts because it puts a marking where the alert would have been generated. We're gonna do that with some of the code that we created here. Let me go ahead and copy this code. But this time I'm going to click on file, new, and I'm going to create a show me. A show me because I wanna mark the candles where the real body average crosses zero. I'm gonna go show me. This will be exclamation, exclamation, exclamation real body cross. All right. And I paste the code in here. We were going to have to do some uh, modification because there we go. Um, 
the plot statements are gonna change. So let me go ahead and comment those three out. My comments, comments. So because uh, instead of alerting when the real body crosses over zero, what I want to do here is plot. Plot one, and I'm gonna put the plot on the close. And if the other happens, I'm not gonna alert, I'm gonna plot two, and I'm gonna plot on the close two. You see what I'm doing? So the plotting is conditional. It only happens if the condition is true. Let's verify this and see if that works. Okay, it does verify. And I'm going to come over here to my trade station. I'm gonna to go to studies, add study, uh, show me, and it's gonna be at the very top, my exclamation, 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 real body. And there we go. Now, let me make that dot bigger. So let me go ahead and edit the real body cross for the style. I'm gonna make it bigger. And for the color, I'll make it a, a little bit brighter. All right, so there we go. So every time there's a cross, I get a blue dot. So this helps you to, to get a better visual. It doesn't change the code. Remember that we copied and pasted the code. What we changed is the style of the indicator and uh, we also, made it a conditional plot. It only shows you the dot if the condition is true. But notice how the dots here align with the crossover of the indicator. If it crosses down, I see a, a dot. I could have cho chosen a different color so that if it, if it does the cross under, maybe it's magenta, let's do that. Okay, there we go. So if it crosses negative, it's magenta. If it crosses positive, it's blue. And that way we have different colors based on the crossover. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's go over here to our next exercise because I think the next uh, thing would be to create a strategy. What if we had taken a trade every time that the real body indicator crosses the zero line? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a short entry when the real body oscillator crosses under the zero line. And the strategy is always in the market. So long entries will exit short positions and short entries will exit long positions. So what, what we're saying is we're gonna keep the strategy simple. We're gonna buy if the real body crosses to the positive side and we're gonna keep that long trade until the real body crosses to the negative side. And when it crosses to the negative side, we're gonna close out our long trade and we're gonna go short. So we're always in the market it's going to flip us back and forth between longs and shorts. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let me go back here to my development environment. And again, I may want to use the same code. So let me go over here. What I'm changing here is the type of easy language that I'm using. I'm going to go to File, New, and then clicking on Strategy. Because now I want the easy language to generate orders when the condition is true. I'm gonna call this exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Real body cross, long entry and short entry. They're both in there. I put my code in there. So the same calculation, if real body crosses over zero, then I'm not plotting, in fact, the plot statement cannot be used in a strategy. But I am going to give myself a little bit more room here because I wanna do some indentation on this particular one because it just makes sense in my head. Remember that line returns, indentations, and spacing, not necessary in easy language, but I'm just doing it for readability. So if it crosses over, I'm gonna buy next bar at market. This is the way that syntax in easy language uh, works for a strategy. And if it goes under zero, then I'm gonna sell short next bar at market. Let's verify this and notice how it verifies. I just did a small tweak on the condition or the conditions stay the same. What changes is what happens if the condition is true. On the show me, it's gonna plot the little dot, but here it's gonna Buy or sell short. Let's verify this. Well, I did verify it already. All I need to do is come here to the trade station chart. 
go to studies, click on add strategy, and let's go ahead and uh, add right here at the top, the real body cross L-E-N-S-E, -E. click okay. And notice how my long end trees are aligning with the cyan dot and the short end tree is aligning with the magenta dot, which is the negative when it turns to the negative side. But by creating a strategy, I'm able to create a signal every time that there's a crossover that line. Isn't that interesting? And the nice thing about doing a strategy is that I can pull up uh, reports such as the strategy performance report right here in the data tab to tell you if what you thought about it's a bad idea or not. And you can tell that on this particular uh, security, AMAT, it was a really bad idea. So the, what this is telling us, is <laughs> don't trade the real body crossover on AMAT. But uh, as we change symbols here, we may get you know, different results because the strategy recalculates. Not a good idea here. Uh, let's see at and not a good idea here for Apple, uh, sort of. But again, this is the way that, this is what the strategy is designed to do. The strategy is designed to find the instance where the condition is true and it's just designed to follow that trade. And this is what the strategy did in this piece of historical backtest. And that, that we said at the very beginning, this is no guarantee of any of future results. So the fact that this one made you know, $4,000 in the past two years, doesn't mean that it's gonna do the same thing. It may just lose uh, more than than what it, what it wants. So just be careful and be aware of the risks of strategy trading, all right? But uh, how cool it is that we took a simple idea from concept to indicator, to show me, to a strategy. Let's go to the next exercise here. I think we're reaching the end of our presentation, but I wanted to end it with a radar screen study because ideally what you wanna do is probably monitor symbols to find out which one is crossing right now, because maybe those crosses could turn into possible trading opportunities. So what, how do we do that here on my trade station uh, platform? Well, the indicator is already created. I probably just need to open up my radar screen. So let me go apps, radar screen. All right, uh, let me go ahead and uh, add a list of symbols. I'm gonna add the NASDAQ 100. I just have to go here to add, and I'm gonna add the real body study that I create or indicator, the real body. Although the real body, yeah, that, that, that one has alerts. So the real body, this one right here, I'm gonna move it down. So uh, let's see, my real body, has this column with zeros. That's because we plotted a zero line, but we can right click, go to studies, show hide plots, and I'm gonna hide plot number two so that I only see um, the real body average. Let me go ahead and uh, resize this because I also want to bring in a chart. Let me copy this one that I have on this other workspace, copy window, I wanna paste it in here. Paste window. And this one, I'm going to resize so it's on the right-hand side of my, of my chart. Let me link them together. So when I click on a symbol here, the chart updates to that symbol. So let's go ahead and take a look. I wanna see the ones that are crossing right now. So let me go ahead and uh, right-click here, go to studies. I'm gonna edit the column and I'm going to go to the alerts and enable the alert continuously, but disabling the message center. We talk about that in our radar screen classes. I'm just gonna click okay. And this is giving us real time monitoring. I don't see anything crossing at the moment. And I believe this is because we need some additional data for the calculation. Let's go ahead and see. Let me right click here, go to studies. I'm gonna edit the study. This is something important to do for radar screen studies. On the general tab, we have to load additional data for the calculation. Let me load 100 bars more. 
The reason why I'm doing that is because radar screen tries to keep the historical data as small as possible, just to make the calculation more efficient. But sometimes by keeping it so limited, it doesn't have enough historical data to match the values we have here on the chart. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just forcing the radar screen to load at least 10, I mean, at least 100 additional bars. I'm gonna click OK, and here we have one. Now, it is currently crossing on a five minute chart. So if I change the time frame to five minutes, there we go, we get the alert. This other symbol is uh, crossing right now, checkpoint software. I click it, and there we go, we have the alert. Now this, of course, the alert is gonna trigger on the next tick. That's why it hasn't, this hasn't traded. Let me go to the next one, to PRT. It's crossing to the bottom side. Um, so yeah, you can see how the value is zero. So that's why it needs to cross lower in order for it to trigger the alert. Now, of course, the alerts are going to be triggered based on the interval, but this is a very nice way for you to know which one of these symbols are triggering the alert in real time. In fact, I can come here to the top on the filter and say, filter by using the real body alert true. So out of the 100, you can see that there's eight symbol, symbols that are crossing right now based on that idea. Again, the, the concept here was just to show you how simple it is to take one idea, turn it into an indicator, then a show me, then a strategy, and then into a scanning tool that you can put into radar screen. Uh, for anybody that wants to learn more about easy language, we have three, uh -oh, I'm getting that alert and charting. We're getting, we have three different books. We have the easy language home study course, which is free to masterclass subscribers. We have learning easy language for strategies, and we have the easy language objects home study course. These are all available for download. So uh, look them up right there in the masterclass uh, channel uh, dashboard. And if you are unable to find them, just let me know. My email is jnava at tradestation.com and I'll send you a direct link to them, okay? Well, this is the end. Thank you so much guys for joining me today. I wanted to give you this brief, brief uh, introduction of the TradeStation uh, easy language development environment. I want to say thank you for your time and thank you for your support. And I hope to see you in my future classes. Goodbye, everyone. My great having you. Bye-bye.